All right, welcome back to episode number 42 of the Piezo Shock Show. Today we have a special treat for you. We have Jack Gray from uh, Piezo by Greco, who if he, he can correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm saying this incorrectly, uh, that he's a liaison for uh, several uh, manufacturing sites in Asia that uh, produce piezo ceramics. So he provides uh, that link between your company and those um, and, and those uh, facilities in order for you to, to take the benefits uh, from purchasing uh, your cer- piezo ceramics, uh, I think namely PZT, but it probably could be other, uh, other types of, uh, of piezo ceramics as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd just like to welcome him to the show. This is the first interview I'm having. Uh, so I'd like to kind of have him give an introduction of himself and we'll jump into some questions I have specifically for, uh, for dealing with uh, and purchasing ceramics overseas, especially from Asia. Okay, I'm Jack Gray. I've been in the PS industry for over 50 years. I started out with a company by the name of Clebyte, who uh, literally created and invented the uh, CGT uh, designation and the uh, licensing of that. Uh, that was back in the 60s. Uh, I, that company eventually went through many, many name changes and finally ended up being Morgan Electric Ceramics, uh, which is a uh, division of Morgan uh, Technical Ceramics Corporation in England. Um, from from uh, Clevite, I went over to Edo Corporation, today is Harris Corporation. I uh, spent uh, five, total five years with them there. And then eventually went back to Ohio to uh, what had become a Morgan and what was um, I, I've had my own company now. It started out as a partnership 25 years ago. We incorporated in 2007. Um, and so we buy from at least four different ma- uh, Chinese manufacturing companies. Everything originally was from Japan, a uh, price and gas field, and issues. And uh, so we you know, ended up buying everything currently. China, mm-hmm. some of the four manufacturers, which have been selected because of their manufacturing capabilities. As you probably all know, um, not one single year of the manufacturer can produce all the requirements they for this don't so we specifically tailor these to these different four manufacturers. Well, that's that, that's pretty interesting that you guys work with, I guess, four four different uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, and you, you mentioned that not all of them, let's say, will specify in each type. So, other kind of general categories that one would specialize in would one be like a more of a bulk PZT, one would be, or or the specific applications, like one one uh, one manufacturing site kind of deals with mainly piezo ceramics, another one kind of assembles uh, simple devices for for the customer. Uh, How does that work for you guys? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the bulk bulk piezo, most of the piezo manufacturers in China do not do large piezo or bulk piezo. Okay. Um, Chinese factories, many of them are sitting, you know, way back in the middle of nowhere, pumping out papers and buzzers and unimorphs and those kinds of things. Uh, Okay. so, you know, that's, and, and, and also in the assembly, so it's got me two other, other different assemblies. So my, my selection just comes to my experience of what these, how, what these companies do, how they make, how they know how to do it, and of course, apply it. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. So you mentioned that mo- uh, M- many of the factories are not producing their own ceramics. Uh, they're rather assembling them into various devices. And, and perhaps they already have maybe one big customer internally, like let's say in China or, or, or in Asia. And they also then are willing to sell them to other companies or sell similar devices to other companies who are interested in purchasing them uh, from, from, from them. So they're kind of, so the nice part about it is that they're building in such high volume that you, that you know that those devices are already in working product. So it's kind of a it's a no brainer to kind of rather than develop the product yourself and then have to deal with how do you glue it glue it together how do you assure quality well you could go to a supplier who's already producing thousands or hundreds of thousands of these devices and um, kind of at least get that part of the quality assurance that they are kind of very well specialized in that specific uh, technology. Yeah, and really the technology, but also the Basically, you got like thin sheet stuff, uh, anything down to uh, 0.1 millimeters up to point, uh, probably uh, 0.2 millimeters uh, in thickness. Where they, they don't do 
casting or doctor blading on we have done here in the States. Okay. Most of these, most of these guys are, are, are still rolling material. Um, so you, you really need to be careful when you're selecting the supplier in, uh, in China to define some of the thin sheet materials because they are quite backwards in their uh, processes. Yeah, so have you have you found that the like Asian suppliers are more are willing to do things they've never done before, and, and obviously those those things would be more problem ridden, uh, or uh, and maybe they won't be specialized in them, so they would not perf- they would not do as good of a job, or they really want to stick to their core expertise. Um, again, it depends on the factory. Some of these some of these companies only want volume. Uh, some of the companies will do custom manufacturing. Okay. Yeah, I, I found that sometimes companies are they they do they lean on let's say Asian manufacturers for a little bit of the R and D, which kind of gets confusing. Where where you know the let's say the U S based let's say startup is saying, oh, we're going to be producing one million of these if they work out well, and um, I guess the Asian manufacturers are kind of kind of being maybe they think that feel like they're being strung along and then and they're getting free r d you know they're getting they're doing free r d so how, how does that have you seen have you seen that happen and how, how does that play out well i've got one manufacturer that is a very very large manufacturer in fact this started only seven years after so that actually created the pvc these guys um and, uh, as everybody in the industry who was initial uh, players in the industry started out the military side um, uh, it was single pistol, which involved the burn site land, which involved the PVT. Uh, so I do have one factor that I typically use for anything that's more high reliability, which needs a lot of engineering and so on. Um, the other manufacturing companies that I do with is generally, I help guide them along on uh, how to do the manufacturing. For example, if you have something that I call flip swap polar, you've got plus and minus on the top surface, you know, a common on the bottom. Some of these guys don't even understand how to do that. So these are the types of things that I hope guide them along to do. I don't I guide them at all on the material and how to just make the material or the mm-hmm. formulation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of begs one question is that I have seen that from, I, I would, I would want to say for the European and American manufacturers, uh, or at least those, or those, those manufacturing facilities that are guided by American and European companies, they do have a little bit of like kind of a research flavor to them. They, they're always trying to concoct something new and that I feel that leads to, there is some amount of expertise in terms of ceramic manufacturing internally. Um, is it? Is it? Would you say that that the um, uh, that Asian suppliers are more more or less only following the recipe, or they actually know why the recipe is what it is? The ones that I deal with know why the recipe is what it is. Okay, yeah, that's them. perfect. Yeah, because because uh, yeah, you could. You, you could follow, so for example, you could pull up a research paper. You could follow its like a, example, or or you know something could, could be passed down from from like you know one team of engineers to the next, and the next team doesn't know why it why they're you know why the the properties are as they are, or you know what what sort where, where do you get your lead oxide from, and where should you not get it from? Uh, like these sort of uh, um, these sort of questions that may not come up. Um, you know, without without expertise and understanding, especially how to troubleshoot. Obviously, things will always go wrong. This is the real world. This is engineering. This is manufacturing. But like, how do you recover? How do you get things back on? You know, let's say property variation, or how, how do you adjust those? So that's that's good. that's really great to hear that the manufacturing facilities that you work with, uh, and especially those that you'll recommend for for specific applications, will do have the internal expertise to uh, correct, let's say, if something during the natural course of business um, in the real world, if something does kind of go off the rails, that they, 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 have, the, they have the expertise and the confidence to uh, steer the ship back and uh, kind of give that, that does, I feel like that is one of the big um, um, hesitancies to, to go with an Asian supplier just because they may be just producing piezos and they don't know the de- the ins and outs uh, of, of the ceramic processing uh, part. Uh, rather, it's just a recipe. Uh, but but uh, yeah, it's good to hear that your your your, uh, your manufacturing facilities do know um, you know how to handle that um, th- those uh, those incidences um, because there's, because I think one thing that anyone anyone who's worked any amount of time in ultrasonics or piezoelectric ceramics is knows that um, well 
and there is a troubleshooting is a huge part of your uh, device um, lifetime. Like it's a huge, it's a huge activity, uh, whether you're, you have a very mature device or you're just starting off with prototyping, they have different issues. Uh, but troubleshooting is an absolute kind of must skill to master. Um, even if all, you know, even if everybody plays by the rules and everyone's honest, there's still troubleshooting that happens because we are dealing with ceramics that happen naturally property significant property can have property variation um so yeah that's a it's good to know um so i'd just like to ask if you have any other things you'd like to add but i can go forward with some other questions i have well you know just again to add to what you said they have the ability to tweak their situation necessary yeah um you know having been in this industry so long even when i was at morgan we lost the process control periodically. Yeah. Uh, and there were, there were issues. And it's, you know, as, you, as you say, significant engineering and, and, uh, and, and capability to turn those things around and get back to them quickly before they had a catastrophic yeah. Um, so, and, and I think, especially in those scenarios, while you, you're going to, um, and, and, you know, not, there is always going to be, I feel like a language or maybe cultural barrier, uh, you know, dealing with Asian suppliers. Um, um, so that is, it's, I think it's, I mean, I'm guessing I'm just tooting your horn right now. It, it would be especially important to have a good liaison, especially like someone like yourself who's been to those factories uh, and has that, I guess, personal relationship and has multiple projects. Because if you're just one little gnat on their wall, uh, like you're only going to, you're only doing a small prototyping effort right now. Maybe you'll ramp up to maybe several thousand or several hundred thousand piezos in the future. But right now you're just ordering like 10, 20, 30. Um, you need someone to take care of you when, because they they need Need to you know kind of take that process or take that client more seriously uh, because yeah, every small project has the opportunity to become a huge product. Um, so that's uh, that's an, another important uh, I guess aspect or, or reason to have a liaison to represent you uh, with those manufacturers because you could obviously go on websites and find different manufacturers directly, but there is a uh, you know there is kind of walking in the door alone uh, versus kind of with uh, with an experienced person who is who has who they have some they have a lot invested in you and, and you have have something invested in them as well uh, yeah we actually have what we actually have uh, 20 year long relationships going. yeah that's uh, that's so uh, <laughs> yeah if i started that now i would be i'm actually 32 years old if i started that 20 year relationship now i'd be 52 so that'd be uh <laughs> it's gonna be a while till i get that that get till i get there <laughs> uh so right. yeah let's let, let, let's use the people uh who who, who are there for us uh, to serve us in this area um so i had a couple of things that like i had on on a list, like these are things that I have seen go wrong with uh, piezo suppliers in general, especially I have seen this, my, most of my experience has been with American and European suppliers because they're not price sensitive, um, price sensitive products. Uh, like say it's sort of like a medical product. So they're not sensitive to price. Um, so they will be happy to go with American or European because the piezo ceramic is not a significant portion of the, of the uh, build materials. Um, but here's a, here are some problems that I have seen, and you can just let me know, like, have you seen it or with your suppliers, or how would you even end up dealing with it if it did something like this did happen? So I have seen that because piezo ceramics are each each company has their own unique formulation, and then you know, and that creates certain capacitance and certain resonant frequencies and properties. Um, then your particular application and it's like your drive circuit really gets wrapped around the properties of the ceramic because of the permittivity or the capacitance. And those are used for certain like technical specifications. Um, then they can actually take advantage like, and they can actually, the, the supplier can actually do price jacking. So I've actually seen this with an American supplier that the head has done at one point. Um, I've heard that they had done price jacking, uh, how how does that work? How, how do we find like the stable stable price, and um, how how does that work for your suppliers and, and you in, in your relationships? In general, I have not had to increase their price for at least five years. In many cases, ten years. Of these suppliers. Um, there was a period in time where you know when, when inflation was setting in, and some of these Chinese manufacturers were actually. You know, initially starting in the large metropolises, you know, the big cities, and then they had to move because of the cost of labor, not materials there, because, because of the cost yeah. of labor, they were moving further and further away from the large cities so they can pay 
a lower wages. However, like I said, my, my, what I do with my customers, I have many customers that are on two and three year uh, contracts. And that's one of the ways that I, I, and I actually started this when I was with Morgan. Many of our customers at Morgan, as they are with, with my company, Graco, are on long term contracts, so we don't have to worry about that charge. Yeah. The issues that, the issues that we're running up, uh, into recently, and, I, and I'll probably jump a little bit ahead of your agenda, is the cost of freight and the issues with the Chinese uh, tariffs that are kind of across. You know, because when, when that happens, I mean, we, we took a, a big hit when we had to start paying 25% on tariffs. Um, but that's yeah. all leveled itself now. Like we've learned our way around some of that. Um, and as I said, price jacking in my business with my suppliers has not been an issue. And okay. I, can, yeah. I, can also, I can also admit that at Morgan, it was. They would raise prices as much as they could whenever they could. And you probably know that when you, when you, when you are a supplier and or a customer of a piezo, you don't change that unless there's a significant reason to do that. Right. Um, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's good to know. Um, you, know, you keep the kind of like the business, uh, transparency, obviously if there's a reason, well, you have to, you know, there's price, maybe there's tariffs or, you know, there's a certain, uh, material that whose price increases that's really understandable but when when and it's like well it sucks but it's 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 the, it's business but when it's not called for or if it's like well well we know that this is a medical device and we know that well they can't go anywhere and they're going to get screwed and there's going to be like huge 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 cost to replace that material uh and change all the programming and all the devices and uh, <laughs> then you kind of get stuck there uh so um the next thing I want to talk about, and I think you partially answered this, is prop shifts in property. So how so is like quality control? I, I'm guessing that it's you know there's a huge back of batch of ceramics. There's measurements made on those. There's certain tolerances that are expected. If they're not in par with what the standard is, then um, there will be kind of a quality. There will there will be. Will there be a series of series of uh, kind of exp uh, you know tests that will steer the steer the composition to be back on its normal property range, or will uh, will it just be like they they have a book where they just have okay if it's too low then the next batch we're just going to increase this certain uh, temperature or or process do this process longer? Um, how, how does that work? Well, uh, again, if you look back in history, property shifting was a problem because process manufacturing was not, was not in our control. Um, okay. So the modern day manufacturing, and even in the Chinese factories, I don't have a property shift issue. I did it one, one, one time I had a property issue, shifting issue, when okay. two companies uh, combined, when they bought one, you know, one merchant to the other. But, you know, I don't, I just don't, you know, I, I, I can't express enough that we do not have quality issues with our suppliers okay. like we did in, even in the American manufacturing circuit, yeah, they are all ISO, they are all ISO nine thousand certified. Uh, they tend to follow those pretty well. There is, you know, as everybody says in China, it's a little bit less less serious. But uh, I I do take I make them toe the line. I make them to you know to do uh, corrective control, find the root cause, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's uh that that's perfect. So uh, in general, um, what. I've even measured from 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 batch to batch from ceramic manufacturers. This we're talking bulk ceramics because I know when you assemble the piezos, there's a, there's more variation introduced. Um, right. Uh, you you may see up to plus or minus twenty percent variation. Is that is is that also something that generally I, I know on on average you'll get a lot of stuff in the center. Uh, you know you'll get mostly uh, the same type of ceramics, but let's say another lot comes that has a different mean. And those extremes are different, um, and that's 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 part of the measurement process and part of um, the final engineering team knowing what properties they need instead of just throwing it in there and just hoping it works. Uh, or uh, so how so with property shifts? Um, I mean, I'm not shifts. Let's say like let's say the general spread of what someone can expect over a long term. Right. Is, is that something you guys guarantee? Like. Um, or like a certain D PSO charge coefficient, you can guarantee between these ranges measured by, let's say, you know, the uh, um, a direct uh, direct D three three meter. Uh, yeah, the, the customers generally dictate what they want for tolerances and and the uh, you know the absolute values that they want. We 
We also do supply, when requested, CPK values for all of those piezo properties or the ones that the customers think are important to their business. So um, I have not, you know, the old days, again, the literature, when you publish it, was capacitance was plus or minus 20%. That's, in my opinion, that's gone out the window. I mean, you, you, we do plus or minus 5%, plus or minus 10% on a regular, regular basis. We can CPK it. We can do, you know, we can do uh, curves okay. and all that type. Yeah. When, when, when we ship our material, we ship a data sheet with what the customer requires for all the pieces of properties, you know, 10, 20 pieces as a sample, a random sample from all of, from that lot is shipped with every single lot that we send okay. to the customer. So, you, so you, let's say your, your company would be happy to, or, or through your manufacturer, you'd be happy to, let's say over a long-term period for, let's say, reasonable, uh, reasonable quantity orders, like let's say customers doing reasonable quantity orders, you'd be, you'd be comfortable saying, well, for, the, for, for however long you're with us, let's say 10, 20 years or five years or three years, we will always ship you this property that you define plus or minus like 10%. Let's say, let's say, oh, absolutely. Yeah, if, you're that's not a, capable, if you're not capable of doing that today, the, the customer is not going to be buying from you. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like uh, uh, during the prototyping stage, people don't even know what they want. So they just take whatever. And then I have seen that companies are reluctant to give tolerances. I, I, I mean, um, even though they do have standard parts, and I guess, uh, the, you know, the geometry of the part does does this kind of play in a little bit to the, what the properties are going to be. But once those are established, and you know what the properties are for a specific uh, ceramic, then it's, it is, it is interesting to me. Yeah. I, I, I'm also a little bit perplexed, although I do know that, you know, piezos are, are they have many processes to them uh, and impurities are obviously a huge deal uh, in terms of determining properties, but it didn't, it doesn't sit well, like saying plus or minus 20%. It seems a little too much to me. Uh, like you should be course correcting. You should be doing better uh, with all the technology we have. Um, so, well, we, we, we don't have any customer that's plus or minus 20 percent, and okay. probably plus, nothing over plus or minus 10 percent. And typically, that's around a capacitance. But, but you're right, it, even sometimes the customers don't know what they need. I, I received a drawing the other day from a customer, it's a 1980 part that didn't even have a capacitance spec on it. And I said, Shame on you guys, we're gonna, we're gonna spec a cap for you, we're gonna give you a time. <laughs> oh, yeah, or you can you can send them to me, and then they, they can pay me to do that. You're gonna do it for free. So, why don't you send them to me, and then we'll we'll work on that spec, and and I'll get paid, and you'll get paid too. <laughs> uh, so that that works that works for me uh so I, i'm guessing that if the customer wants every part measured you guys will be able to do that at a, at a cost every yeah, ceramic books from, okay but they want 100 they want 100 data which you know um there are a few customers out there i don't have any actually that that require that you know, because we always send a data sheet with with it and uh it's a random sample and if you know if you can't t trust that type of data you don't. You should never have to do 100 percent data anymore unless it's an extremely tight tolerance. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Some sometimes. Well, I've seen actually 100 percent testing, uh, and the reason is that um, they want to. Th there's when you assemble the ceram when you assemble a device, there are many, there is variation caused by the assembly itself, um, like surface surfaces and just, just how, how there are uh, other, other differences in epoxies that, that ca cause differences. So I've actually seen hundred percent testing uh, for the purpose of um, doing as much as we can to reduce, pro to reduce variation in the final device. But yes, like you can design your device so you don't need all that, but if you didn't design it properly, you're going to need a, you're going to need all these like 100 testing and you're going to have to jump through all these hoops and stuff because your device itself was was not designed properly um the, the place the place that i see 100 testing and it's very very few but uh is where people are trying to do matching of, of uh ceramics. yeah More than yeah one yeah. Ceramic. yeah that's uh yeah just to um just to reduce that variation because um um because there's like you know there's there's other parameters that are associated with it feedback and in the, in the medical space they get really caught up with the uh, definitely keeping things in tolerance and um um there's a there, there's a important need for that there um so i had a couple other ones and we're almost done i think we've been running a good conversation so we've run a good while here but i think people will find it very beneficial uh, i am especially um 
so just a kind of a quick uh, maybe asking the obvious question you know why would why wouldn't why wouldn't somebody just want to google a company on Ch uh that's in china or asia and purchase directly from them uh, or contact them versus go through uh go through a liaison uh like 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 yourself well um first of all is as you stated many people most people don't know anything about the chinese market so if they've got someone like myself who's been in the industry in the industry as long as i have been they, they've got someone who knows the companies who knows the right companies to do this also yeah. some people just some people want to sub out their out their purchasing you know there's many many people today don't want to do their own purchasing also our company stocks for all of our return customers if they if they want it so for example let's say you buy a ten thousand piece uh, lot of something Okay. We will stock it at least ten percent of that for you, so that when you have another reorder time, there's there's little to no lag time. But we typically say we'll we'll stock up to two months, which is the lead time, about eight weeks of your requirements. But again, these are repeat customers with reasonable volumes. Okay, and for let's say somebody wanted to order like a prototype batch, like they wanted to order forty or forty ceramics or something, and maybe it's maybe it's a standard size, maybe it's not. Let's say it's a ring. Uh, oh, how long would that take you? Do you believe once somebody ordered it? Uh, how long or once somebody yeah placed their order and let's say they didn't have any special tolerances, it's just a ring. Um, so you know silver, uh, uh, you know silver electrodes, nothing special. Uh, how long does that take? You, would you just well, get, uh, get? Uh, uh, unless, unless it's, it's you know you really spec to the hilt eight weeks is our standard lead time okay um but again the problem that we've encountered recently is is the, the, the shipping backlog you know as you know oh, okay yeah. companies, companies are driving us nuts these days yeah but, uh, but but the two biggest challenges you know again coming from asia and and is is the the freight slash shipping and the potential change in, ta in tariffs. I'm hoping that these tariffs come down at some point in time. Okay. That maybe the current administration will take them from 25% down to 10% or something. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're we're hoping for on the business side. <laughs> more ceramics means more uh, more products, and more products for me means more problems I get to solve, and it means more ceramics you get to sell. <laughs> um, but, so, but again, yeah. uh, to, to your question, uh, a lot of these people don't have a staff to do the purchasing. Mm -hmm. they, they want to cut out of their budget. So, uh, so that's, uh, they don't want these people sitting there Googling and, and trying to, you know, bring, uh, uh, learn the Chinese or the Japanese or whatever market they're trying yeah. to. Yeah. So there is like multiple, multiple things you're bringing, uh, bringing there. It's, it's, uh, in addition just to being a, a link, you're actually, you can actually, it, it actually provides, um, it's much, it's just more, much more efficient, like instead of just going after and you're not really sure what you're looking for and you, you, you know, you don't know what you're looking for at all. Cause there could be significant red flags, uh, as well. Um, and, uh, in that relationship. Um, well, so there, there, there's yep. a language barrier. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I deal with uh, these companies. Each and every one of them that I deal with either has a trading agent, which I don't use because I don't want to go through, a, you know, through a third party. But they have people inside that they de designate strictly for the English speaking uh, customer. Uh, custom. Okay, nice. Um, so, so I think you highlighted the biggest issues is freight. You know, with purchasing from Asia is freight time. Um, uh, is there any other issue that is something to consider? Like, why would maybe why would even someone go f with an American or or a uh, or a European supplier? Uh, maybe if I'm guessing, maybe if they want something very specialized, like they're going to be doing some research or something, that could be a reason. But uh, what do you think? Well, most of my customers come to me because they know me, they know my reputation, um, and in all reality, I'm saying I have not. I, I just started a website uh, about five months ago. I okay. didn't need a website. Yeah, <laughs> I've worked for four different companies, and most of my most of my customers call me up and say, "Hey, Jack, you still in that piezo business?" Yep, blah 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 blah. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I didn't have I didn't have a need to advertise it all in, in reality. Yeah, now I know. I guess everybody's like raising their flag at the the highest hill they can. They're they're doing all these things like I am, like making videos and trying to get trying to get known. But like, there's uh, there's some real people in the in the in the industry who have that reputation. Obviously, the track record to it, and you, you can't really uh, you can't replace it. Uh, you can write Google. Yeah, it. Right. <laughs> yep. uh, so that, so so do you see like 
I mean, is there is there a reason? Would you see any reason, particularly, to go with a European or American supplier uh, versus in European? From what you've seen, versus a Chinese one, or is this your preference? Whatever you prefer, if you just simply prefer well, well, to work with, yeah. I, I you know, the, um, the Americans can't compete with the with the Chinese uh, pricing. Yes, um, and, and and many of the companies that don't go to the Chinese, you know, they're 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 worried about. What they what, what the rumors are about how poor the quality is, um, which is today it's not true. It's true if you go to the wrong company, but it's not true if you go to the right companies. So you know, I, I we just can't compete with the pricing from the American or European companies. It, you know, uh, the only re- the only the only issue that we have is I had a very very large uh, military contract for quite some time, and for years they bought for me even um, against the rules of the government that said they couldn't buy from China. And then one day they come up to me and they said, we've got to stop doing this. So, you know, then that hurts. I mean, I lost a major contract because of uh, ITAR. I see. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, there are some, I mean, I, I know military is obviously a big, big uh, supplier. I mean, big, uh, big area. I guess that would be, that would be the reason. But uh, yeah, I guess maybe some people like, maybe some people feel more comfortable. Maybe let's say some companies feel more comfortable talking directly to um, directly to the staff of the company they're purchasing. Let's say an engineer, let's say from an American company wants to talk directly to the uh, ceramic. But, you know, th- for them to even like know what to, what to say and what to ask, it could, because om- I've seen that interaction where, let's say, a, uh, a, 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 you know, technical folks from, from a U.S.-based company are talking to, to, um, uh, talking to a um, talking to an expert, let's say at, at a manufacturing site, and they, they just actually sometimes get more conf- more confused than helped uh, because the, you know they'll ask so many questions the manufacturing site and like they won't know what to say and pretty much at that point they're just like they don't so it, it is it is like really important to have somebody with expertise on your side who is who's representing you. Um, at, in any case, I, I feel like personally, like if you're, let's say if you're going with the American supplier, like maybe you call Hussein, that's so like he can be on the line uh, just to kind of clarify things and kind of put things in perspective of what's being spoken to. But you kind of provide that for not for free, but for a uh, kind of for a business relationship that you have with your with your suppliers. Uh, yeah, as you know, this is a technical sell. If you don't know the technology of this, you're 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 not going to sell the engineer. Most of these companies. Purchasing, believe it or not, are, are are ruled by the engineering. You know, they oh. they, they call the who, who who they buy from, and and the, and the and the and the and the purchasing people are typically more like puppets. Uh, you know, they, they the engineers do the qualification, they do all the testing, and they say, okay, I want company A, B, or C, and that's it. Uh, and yeah. it's strictly because they know that they're dealing with somebody who has that technical expertise. Yeah, awesome. That's uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, I think that those are all the questions I have uh, today. Well, you, you, yeah. uh, you, you had a, you had something else on a cracking and electrode issues. What was that all? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I mentioned like let's say um, let's say a customer has uh well they i mean you, you know th- that's kind of sometimes it's very specific to what the client is doing uh let's let you know they're let, let's say they're cracking their ceramic rings or something but maybe they they find something like electrodes peeling off or some some, some let's say they didn't change anything in their process but they're noticing quality issues uh uh, how how what's the process of dealing with that? Because I know it's a little bit more complex. Because I guess in a in a heated situation like that, um, there there needs to be like flawless communication on on what's happening and what's going to be done to resolve it, either at the client site or at the manufacturing site as to what happened. So in, in a kind of heated situation like that, how how would you? I mean, it's it's again, it's the nature of the game. There can be issues. It's not impossible. Uh, but we have to all obviously the point is to be honest and to get to the problem root of the problem uh how 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 would you you handle that if that ever happened well i mean i've had it happen throughout my entire career with no matter who i was working for they have, yeah they'll have whether it's an electrode uh, uh, uh a pull test issue or a cracking issue and it's just you know you need to get involved you need to you need you you don't bury your head in the sand you know you don't let them try to solve themselves you try to work with them and to suggest, because I've built a lot of transistors in my life. In fact, my one of my uh, jobs in Morgan was I actually started all of their added value manufacturing, and I mm-hmm. ran their added value 
manufacturing as well as the sales of it. So, okay. you know, I, so I, I worked with a lot of these problems that the customers were having because they didn't know how to use piezo. Yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm trying to fill in the gap there. So you can do less work, and I can do more. You know, you can do you can do more of the more of your value, and maybe I can I can fill in that. Is <laughs> so you don't have to do free consulting. <laughs> yeah. And you know, so, electro electric issues, electric issues are pretty much gone. Okay, uh, they're pretty much gone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I don't. I don't know about the American manufacturers anymore, but I do know that, you know, I've not had an electro issue for 15 years because people learn how to control it. They need to, they, they now understand they need their special environment. They can't be, you know, with the back door open, blowing on the, on the furnace kind of thing. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's got to be environmentally controlled and so on. So I've not seen silver electrode issues at all. Yeah, and I, and I do like the fact that the I'm I'm guessing that the, the Chinese manufacturing sites are producing a huge amount of ceramics perhaps more than the Americans and the, uh, and the Europeans are producing so many and that just breeds quality because you can't run a facility with, with stuff that doesn't work. Uh, you well, can't. But, but, you know, the bulk of the manufacturing in China, as you say, is large volume, huge quantities yeah. for, the, for, the, for the types of applications that you and I work on, which are typically, uh, you know, medical or uh, industrial um, most of these things are custom manufactured, as you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so um, until that customer gets up to high volume, these guys, you know, I'm, I'm selling 40 pieces, 10 pieces, 50. Pieces. I got customers that buy 100 pieces a year, you know, so we go anywhere from 100 to tens of thousands. Uh, okay. Or hundreds That's, of thousands. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I, expecting, I, I'm expecting an order for 300,000 pieces here before the end of the year. Now, we right, do a couple million. But, couple million pieces of ceramic a year but i mean that's that that's that that's from only three customers you know the, the most the bulk of them are in the you know few thousand pieces yeah that's uh that's cool hopefully i, I think i got some in the pipeline that are that are, that are looking to uh they're looking to really scale uh it's just uh just a matter of time i think so it definitely keep right. your keep you and your uh kind of uh and, and your services in mind um so yeah i think uh I really want to thank you for this uh, this call. I've learned a lot, and I'm sure I'm definitely going to keep referring to this episode for others because it's uh, it's important to uh, it's important to know what options exist and um, kind of take the help that's available to you. Uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in taking the help that's available, not reinventing the wheel, uh, but using wheels like uh, you know on hand <laughs> that are there uh, for for you to use. So. Um, I would just let uh, so I'll put your I'll have your contact information in the description. Uh, I think um, email might be best for you. I'm guessing. Uh, yes, yes, please. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll put that in. I'll also put a link to your website. Uh, but that's just kind of I know it's just a kind of a placeholder for information. Uh, but the real work starts with. Uh, with you know the that relationship once you get started and um, getting ceramics and kind of feeling accurately represented and like somebody has your best interests uh, in the other part of the world where where your ceramics are being made. Right now, um, you had one other item on there before you go. You had something about doing extra measurements. What was that about? Yeah, yeah, that's just uh, you know some. Uh, Let's say some companies may let's say for, take example that pairing uh, example. Um, you you know would your would your would your suppliers even be open to doing something like well they're going to measure every ceramic they're going to group all the ceramics into different bags that are in different categories and then give them to you like that. Oh yeah okay yeah I got it. all right I, I just thought you meant you maybe different properties and properties that you know because typically you 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 a, a customer will spec a capacitance. Um, possibly mm-hmm. a D3, uh, a yeah. Delta, uh, I got very basic measurements, but, uh, you know, we do things, I'm looking at a drawing here right now, which actually we've got where the, the customer requires, they, they, they have a capacity value of plus or minus 15% over time, but every lot has to be within plus or minus 3%. So, yeah. you can, you know, so, so we do those kinds of things as well. And we give them CPK and we give them CPK, uh, grass as well. Nice, yeah, that's uh, uh, it's kind of impressive. I haven't seen CPK graphs or or that property represented on what I've seen from Europe and in in America. I haven't seen that. Um, so there's 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 serious quality work going on. Not quality in terms of progress quality, but quality in terms of quality assurance happening. Uh, that maybe I think that are ahead of maybe their their competitors in Europe and America. Uh, I would even say, in, in, from what you're mentioning. Um, well, uh, you know, my, 
Morgan wasn't like that. I mean, Morgan, you know, we had, uh, I think we had three black belts on our, on our, in our factory. So okay. and that all stemmed, that all stemmed from the higher distract stuff that they were doing, you know. For I see. Okay. So yeah. Um, that's, uh, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, so okay so yeah i think this is a this has been a great conversation uh it's going to be great reference for anyone i don't think any interview like this exists online so i'm kind of excited to put it up and share it and reference as much as possible and yeah i hope uh, hope you also kind of direct maybe somebody's interested in uh maybe uh you can save some time and just direct them to this recording instead of having a huge conversation or have it to be like a precursor <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate your invite and, and, and all this that you'll be doing for me. Um, I, I would like to, at some point, maybe even when we when we uh, get off this uh, particular call, learn more about what your guys' capabilities are and what you do. Uh, yeah. That will help me. That will help me possibly steer some customers to your to your direction. Yeah, I can. I can. I'll, I'll probably put a, like a list, maybe a list, maybe, maybe the uh, the. I'll stop the recording right now. Um,